You are listening to the Practicing the Art of Small Business podcast with Shannon Merlo and Julie Parker. Enjoy this conversation about business, leadership, and the self-awareness journey to great success. Welcome, Julie, and welcome, listeners, to Practicing the Art of Small Business. Julie, by my calculations, we are up to episode number 42. 42, really? Why? I think 39. Uh I don't know. I don't like know. your age. Ba boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a few more. Uh, welcome to me and welcome to you, Shannon. Welcome to all of us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got the welcome mat laid out. Although my neighbour's welcome mat says go away. So <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people, I was just thinking about that this afternoon when I was taking the dog for a walk. I don't know why it popped into my head. Have you heard of people, you know, some of them are introverts, some are extroverts, but some are, what do they call them? Ambiverts. I'm an ambivert. Yeah, so tell us, tell us what an ambivert is. Well, prior to that word coming into my vernacular, I was calling it an outgoing introvert. That's the one I've been thinking that was the one that was in my head, yeah. And I guess the whole point is that everyone's on a scale, right? Mm. And they've finally worked out that there are people on the introvert, extrovert scale who kind of oscillate between the two. Um, and so for m- my interpretation of it in my experience of being an ambivert, outgoing introvert <laughs> is that I, um, I can network really well. People would assume that I'm really extroverted because I've got high energy. I'm uh, not afraid to kind of be in the room. I'm not afraid to kind of take the lead in conversations, but I get quite worn out by humans and I need to recharge by not having any human contact whatsoever. <laughs> so I won't even respond to a text message. Or a, I won't. Have, my, my best friend um, spoke to me last night. I think it was last night. I don't know. This week has gone so fast. Yeah. And it was about eight o'clock. And she said, oh, I've got to go um, do this thing. I can call you back in 15 minutes or so. I said, no, nah, my brain's gone. I'm done now. I'm out. Yeah. I'm done now. You squeezed out the last me. little bit of me. <laughs> you got Talking up to 8 p.m. was going to be a hard task anyway, so <laughs> now it's it's over. So that's my experience of being an outgoing introvert. Oh, that's it's very good. I'm, I still don't know what I am. I think I just swing between the two. I mean, I really, once I'm in the company of people, I love it. I get a high off it. Um, but then there's other times when, you know, you find out you've got the house to yourself for the night, you can just do whatever the hell you want, and you're like, why don't I do this every night? <laughs> <laughs> this is very nice. So I, I, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, you're, mm. ha- you have been having a lot of discussions of late on a topic that mm-hmm. we've decided to have as our focus for today's podcast. That was a very long way of saying, what are we talking about today? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I think the way that you've said it exemplifies a good reason why we should talk about what we're going to talk about, which I'm not going to tell you what we're talking about yet, mostly because I think it's such a step change to what we were just talking about. Um, so we are going to be talking about systems and processes and listeners this is not a yawn. This is the most exciting thing. You read my is, mind. I was is. about to say, calm down, listeners. Don't get so damn excited. That's too much. <laughs> well, the introverts are probably clapping their fingers, clapping their fingers, snapping their fingers, clapping their hands, uh, getting super excited, and the extroverts have probably just lost any bit of energy. Pitch off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're an extrovert, just come and enjoy the dulcet tones of Julie and I bantering. But if you're an introvert, I just know that you've already got your pen and paper out and you're ready to jump on board. Well, I'm ready to jump on board. So right now mm. I must be an introvert. So let's go. Oh. What's made let's you go. look into systems or were you not looking into it? It just happened to be that you had many conversations around it. Good question. I just think maybe the universe was giving me a good nudge up the behind. So <clears throat> with all of my clients, they are all of all of my clients are those ones who are getting caught on the tools. Yeah. And not having time and energy to work on the business. And so one of the big things that that keeps re- repeating is 
what are your systems and processes like? What are your systems and processes like? What are your systems and processes like? And it's one of those things where we've got to carve time out of our diaries to work on the business to build the system so that we can be more efficient to get off the tools. And it, it seems to be sort of this ongoing cycle uh, with a lot of clients. And so I've been seeking solutions to that on behalf of clients. But at the same time, I was like, I've got big plans to scale a business this year. And uh, as I start to do things, I'm like, oh, God, this really needs to be outsourced to someone else. Like, I don't need to be coordinating my calendar. Someone else can do that for me. Surely, <laughs> surely. <laughs> and I've done it before and it's been great. Um, and, of course, there's lots of, there's lots of systems that you can use to manage your calendar and your diary and things like that. So I just thought we could talk about the, the value of it. Like, as I've just said, a lot of clients, in order to scale, you need to have systems and processes in place. So that's a big, that's a big why. And we can talk a little bit more about that. And then maybe we could talk about, um, some systems and processes that you're familiar with, like a little bit of the, the how. And, um, and then, um, yeah, go from there. That's kind of what I'm thinking, Julie. That sounds pretty good, Shannon. Awesome. So do you, um, I'm guessing a lot of dental practices do have systems and processes in place because you kind of have to, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. And that's the key for one of the reasons why we should have systems and processes in place because one of the things that help us be a professional organisation, whether we're a dental surgery or a restaurant or a provider of any kind of product or service, is the consistency of the delivery of that product or service mm. helps clients and patients have trust and faith in us and that's what helps us grow. So the way we do things, that also forms a little bit part of our branding, doesn't it? And so if we want to select a particular way our customers feel during their journey with us, we do need to identify, well, well, let's have an agreement about how we're all going to be doing the thing so we're consistently doing it and it's repeatable all the time and any new person coming on board gets to learn those systems and when old people leave, we don't lose those systems. Julie, there was so much gold in that little sentence of yours that I absolutely loved. Thanks. <laughs> I like it when you like so what I talk about Makes you feel like a very <laughs> spot here. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be here otherwise. <laughs> the two things I want to reiterate in case you uh, are not reading the transcript of this podcast at the same time that we're talking is the consistency on delivery of your service builds trust. That trust big. is super important, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also you did a beautiful little um wrap around into our past podcast episode number 41 about the customer journey and this is where having a system around your customer journey creates the consistency which builds trust which brings your customers coming back and helps your brand loyalty crazy that was pretty impressive too shen Nin. see <laughs> My inclination, <laughs> just so people know when I do that, my inclination is to shorten and abbreviate every person's name that I know. And <laughs> Shannon doesn't mind a nickname but doesn't like the nickname Shan. And so my I go for the Shan and then I go, whoops, nin, to try to complete it and to get rid of my mistake. <laughs> Actually, in talking about talking about a getting to know me moment and really segueing off the topic, I actually don't mind the nickname Shan, but in business, I find it really confronting mm. when someone starts calling me Shan. I actually had a VA who literally after the first meeting started calling me Shan and I'm like, never used Shan, never invited because it's too familiar for me. Okay. So in business, it's Shannon. Yeah. And if after, once someone becomes familiar with me, then it just becomes a natural mm. Thing, but it's very jarring mm. and that's why I admonished Julie when she called me Shan. I think we had to pause the thing once and I was like, I was like, Julie, you can call me baby, you can call me honey, you can call me lovely, you can call me Shan, you can call me sh not Shazza. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you and I have a line there. Can, you can call me late for dinner, but whatever you do is in public. 
think <laughs> on our public platform. I don't want people just randomly assuming they can call me Shen. That's it. And that's the end of my rant. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough to Shen. <laughs> <laughs> so that was interesting. Well, I didn't realise that we'd circled back to episode 41. You're very good with your memory and knowing what episodes are doing a wash. Well, no, I mean, you did it. I just highlighted that you did it. It's observant. I like it. That's okay. So I love that uh, you've mentioned that it's about the consistency of delivery. As I said, I th- and you also made a great point. If when someone leaves, you're not losing the IP. Really important, especially if you've got an incumbent in the role and they kind of created the role for themselves. Yeah. It creates a lot of risk for your business if you haven't got. Well, what does that role fundamentally do? Especially if it's not a a thinking role that sounds terrible but Mm. if you're a consultant obviously there's a lot of thinking about ip within someone's brain that's hard to that's the whole point of having a consultant right Mm. but when you're doing customer delivery and dealing with reception and handling complaints or doing social media or writing a thing or putting a thing on the website or whatever it is anything that's repeatable is something that you want to have documented for safety around losing that person Mm. Hmm. and even though i'm a big fan of the written system when we're you know this podcast is aimed at both small and medium-sized enterprises when we're talking (laughs) entrepreneurship solo journey and it's just me out there and i it's so funny that this is the topic because just today so the start of the year i thought to myself One of my goals is to systematize my business, to write down the way I do all the things. And so to support myself in that goal, I have identified Evernote as the place I'm going to house all the information because I use Evernote for a whole bunch of other things as well. And I put in my online calendar a reminder every single Monday for half an hour to one hour, doesn't have to be a full hour, but up to one hour, I will be entering in what system work into Evernote and then I've got a system (laughs) that if something appears in my uh, calendar for a month and I haven't done anything about it my system is do the Eisenhower matrix delete it and Mm -hmm. so being the first to Feb I haven't done any Evernote stuff and I looked at that (laughs) today and I'm like haven't done that for a month delete (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so now and I thought to myself because everything I, I do this with everything I delete if you are important enough you will come back into my sphere and I said that to it and then within hours it's come back important in my sphere it's ridiculous how the universe works how wonderful is that when you opened with Shannon I believe you're focused on this and I said the universe has sort of dropped it in my lap and now the universe is dropping it back in your lap Julie because it's saying Julie you've got those big goals you are going to have to systematize yeah that's it and the reason why I started with that whole conversation that part of the conversation with you know we have solopreneurs out there because in my brain I'm like but I change the way I do things all the time because I've you know Mm. find a new app or a new way or I've listened to a lecture about doing it in a slightly different way and if I was going to drop off the perch then the business would just kind of go anyway I don't know if anyone would take it over although you know living a legacy and all it's a big deal (laughs) But you can be forgiven for having the audience members out there who are in my position, in your position as well, where we don't have a team of people that we have to have a consistent way of doing things, that what's the point? What's the point for us by ourselves doing all the systems, going to all that effort? Well, I think there are two reasons from my perspective Prior to recent times, there have been times where the business has scaled to the point where I've needed support in the business. And I I actually have marketing support and IT support um, that I've just brought on. So I am bringing people in to do things that is not my zone of genius in order to give me the freedom and flexibility to do the things that I want to do. <laughs> that is my zone of genius, i.e. 
coaching and talking to you, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but prior to that, when it has just been me, every time I do the repetitive task, I feel like I'm reinventing the wheel. And I, I imagine this isn't quite how you think because you're way better at not being faffy <laughs> as, I am, <laughs> as I am. And so every time I bring a new client on board, I kind of go, oh, who was the last time I bought on board? What's their email again? I'll just yeah. forward that, but then I'll tweak the email, but then I've got to go, oh, I have to remember I've got to set up the invoice, but then I've got to add them to the CRM, but then I've got to do the thing. And so actually those repetitive tasks, I'm using brain space because I haven't got it written down yeah. to remind me of the things that I'm supposed to do. And then I also have to refine the documents every time because the documents are different depending on the what, but I'm using all my brain space. Mm. So even if you're a solopreneur where you've got no one else that you're working with at all if it's a repetitive task and it's taking up brain space because it's multi-step and you need to do various things documenting it down helps you to go what do i do again and just make it simple yeah i think when it's documented down as well you can look at where things could actually be done to improve the process from your customer perspective so again if i look at my onboarding there are a couple of forms that clients fill in which are word documents but then the next part of the system is i've got to do something with those word documents i should set up a form using my crm that would automatically update that person's record that they become a client that the form is then attached to their record that it then updates various things like their date of birth which again would be a manual process so i think once you once you nut down what are the things you're doing you can easily see where there's process improvement as part of it which then improves your customer journey improves your efficiency improves your customer experience yeah absolutely and then the, and then the next thing is why you would do it is julie i bet as part of your role there are things that you don't really want to do and I know that you have some good goals in your business and you you will scale and what you'll want to do is spend more time focusing on high leverage stuff that's going to get you you know talking to your clients building your uh, bu building uh, your content uh, things like that and so there will be a point that your, your your business will need to have other people involved in it because you simply can't scale on your own. And when I say scale, you can still do a lot of it on your own and there's lots of technology that's working to now automate, but you still need to understand the way that you're doing things in order to automate the things, such as what I've just said with my CRM and forms and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. So that's that's my response to your question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been jotting down all of the other reasons why systems are very good and why I should be going back oh. into Evernote. It'll be back on the agenda tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> what were the other reasons you wrote down, Dan? Well, and, and another reason is because it does force you to, as you're noting down the process, it's kind of forcing you to really look at that and is this or, and, and, you're, and you've got, at, as a result, maybe a better considered way of doing something because otherwise you're just doing it in the heat of the moment with the few minutes that you feel like you've got time to do or go bang this out so I can get the next thing on my list done. And that's not taking into account proper consideration. Whereas if you say, no, this is going to be my system. I'm going to allocate time to be able to write this up. And as I'm writing it up, I'm going, oh, maybe there is a better way of doing it. I think I saw an app about this or I saw a copywriter say that or whatever the thing. So I think it does allow for better considered tasks actually forming part of your systems as well. Because you're not doing the writing up in a hurry, but you certainly roll out the tasks in a hurry sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that led me into my other one, which was the quality of the result. Because sometimes we are... For example, the podcasts, you know, Charles has got one, I've got one, we've got one. And there's multiple, especially with Charles's, there's many, many steps involved. And 
quite often I forget a step and then I remember it the following day. <laughs> and so the quality of the result, if I had my checklist there, the quality of mm. the result would be far better than my more, not haphazard, but my more just relying on my memory in the moment, which is what you were talking about before. Sometimes we don't, we don't do it often enough and the memory's not there for us and we have to kind of rediscover it all. Absolutely. And I know that you, well, I know I'm not going to assert it. You've said to me that you quite enjoy editing the podcast, mm. but I've said, look, Julie, there needs to be an even exchange. And if I'm not pulling my weight, you need to let me know. If you turned around tomorrow and said, Shannon, it's now your time to edit the podcast, I would be like, hell's no. Julie, you need to write down how that is and I will pay for someone else to do it because that is not my zone of genius. It's going to take way too much time. I'm going to get bogged down in the weeds. No. And that was another one of my reasons I jotted down, delegation. How can you delegate a task if you haven't got it written down anywhere of how to do it? Exactly. Exactly. Now, we've jumped into talking about systems and processes without actually decide, without actually clarifying what a system Ooh, and process nice is. One. <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. Very <laughs> <good base> start. <laughs> what in your mind is a system or a process, Julie? I'm throwing this over because I don't know if I've got a succinct answer yet. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna piggyback off your explanation. That sounds fair. That sounds fair. I think a system is a repeated task. A, a repeated task. I mm -hmm. think. <laughs> yeah, that, that seems ridiculously basic. <laughs> What's the difference between a system and a process? Because I think the process is like the written down version of how we do things and the system is the system that we use to like the softwares and the various things that we put the processes into. Hmm. We should Google this. I just have. <laughs> a system is the methodical way that you provide specific goods or services to customers. Your system is the what, as in what value you had, you add, what value do you provide the customer? Likewise, your processes are the how. How do all the activities inside your company work together to provide that value? <laughs> I'm still trying to get my head around. I'm going to go for another definition. All right. So, Julie, because we're not very good at defining what a system or a process is, we just know that we need them. I'm going to refer to the book that anyone who is listening to this and who's ready to systematize should read. It's Systemology by David Jenkins. So this book is very, very good and very highly recommended. It says, what is a system? A system, also known as a process, a procedure, standard operating procedures, SOPs, work instructions, a how-to document or a workflow, is just a series of linear steps that when followed produces a predictable outcome. This definition works on the smallest level where a system may be a detailed step-by-step -step instruction all the way up to a high-level system that shows how an overall project fits together. A system may be unconscious and undocumented, but it's still a series of moves that produce a result. So, uh, da, 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 da. so the, the word system and process are used as a singular definition through systemology, yeah? Yeah, essentially. And I, I do it think that a lot of people are using people better the that word. We couldn't define it. Define the difference. <laughs> I think for me, process sounds like that step by step thing, whereas the system is the way that you structure your step by step. But I think it's all kind of getting merged in together okay. for brevity these days. Yeah. 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 So now that we know what a system and a process essentially is, mm. Julie, you've talked about putting your system down on Evernote mm -hmm. and typing it. I'm going to, can I refer to the book quite a bit, but also with a little bit of learning yeah, experience? Yeah, but can I also say I would videotape myself doing it over writing it down any day of the week because the written word is difficult to do and difficult to read. <laughs> So this is what the book says. One of the easiest places to start is to look at the things that you're doing repetitively. 
So every day, every week, every month, if there's something that you do that's repetitive, you want to start documenting it down. And the easiest place to start is to record your screen as you're doing the task, yeah. detailing down the steps as you go. And the beautiful thing about that is you then can outsource that video to someone else to write up the process. And you're speaking out but, all the nuance. You exactly. wouldn't necessarily type all that out because you'd be you'd be left with a volume for every system. A hundred percent. Plus it's a huge amount of work. Huge amount of work. <laughs> and this is the thing. So you can this is where with my Evernote SOP process for JPPS, if I'm doing if I all I'm doing is videotaping myself doing it and speaking to myself about how I'm doing it, that's not actually really taking that much more additional time at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because you're doing it anyway. Yeah, doing it anyway. I love it. Oh. The other benefit that we have when we videotape ourselves or colleagues doing the thing, for example, if the system is how we're going to welcome a patient into a dental surgery or how we're going to communicate to a client regarding a particular sales process or whatever the thing is, when you're recording somebody, you also get the energy in their character, in their voice, you're getting their body language, you're getting far more information that you could ever put down in written word. Exactly, exactly. From that customer journey perspective that you talked about right at the start, it very much helps to sell what does your brand mean. So from a training perspective and onboarding new staff, you are very quickly giving context to what does it feel like to be part of this business? What sort of tone of voice are we using when we are actually greeting people or talking to people and things like that? And video is that the best way to convey that, obviously. Otherwise, you can put lots of exclamation marks <laughs> in your writing. <laughs> this is really, really important. <laughs> Ten exclamation Hi! points. <laughs> I'm so excited to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that when I built my website years ago using Tyler somebody or others, 132 steps to building a website. It's a two-hour presentation. Tyler Moore. Tyler, no, that's Mary Tyler Moore. Tyler somebody rather. Um, <laughs> and that was a two-hour thing. And so granted, I was watching a minute, pausing it, doing the thing, watching 30 seconds, pausing it, doing the thing. It took me two days to get through the video, but I built my website. And so this is the other thing. When you are sh being shown how to do something and you've got that ability to pause all the way through, you get onto that information. I don't know, if it, is it just me that, that I find that far more easy than if I was reading a few sentences and going, what are they talking about? I, I can't quite find where he means about go to that thing. And video, video just wins pants down. <laughs> hands, hands, down. hands down. Not hands down. No, no. Hands down. Julie's, I don't know what I, Julie's doing. I don't know who down. I'm thinking about with their pants down. <laughs> and we'll move on because this is been great. <laughs> so with regard to a system, there's lots of ways that you can build your systems, definitely starting from recording. As I said, I've been on a little bit of a journey to find people to support my clients. There are people that you can hire who actually are certified in systemology. I am not because it would do my head in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they do have online programs as well to talk you through their methodology. Obviously, these people are very good. What they do is they sit down and they ask you what your process is. So they essentially talk you through or they document as you're talking through and they'll do screen recordings and things like that. So they build the system for you off the way that you do it. So no work whatsoever. Then there are those who, and with the systemology approach, their idea is you write the system how the system is. And once you've got the system down, then you go through a process improvement on it. So they don't suggest any additional stuff within the system. However, I spoke to another company yesterday and what I loved about them is they, they are all about helping organisations or business owners in particular get off the tools and free themselves up. And so they have a system program where then they 
will hire VAs for you and embed them within your system. So they write your systems for you using your processes, but what they then do is they tweak it for improvement. So they'll sort of, as, as you're working through, they'll sort of see that this is clunky or not working, and what they'll do is they'll actually help you to link up your software so that there's automation happening and they will make suggestions of, hey, we sort of notice that you're doing this a little bit difficultly or, or, or what have you, have you considered using this software or this approach? So I kind of loved that because I think we, we live with the, your can I, not your can I, Tony Robbins can I, but that constant never ending improvement. And I think that if you can bring people in who are seeing what you're doing and advocate for change, I'm like all on board with that. So I was pretty excited about having a chat with them. And then the done for the, the do it yourself methodology is around that kind of recording, documenting, and then starting to outsource from there. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it. With so your Evernote process is a great system because obviously Evernote you can put in your videos and attachments and you can link through to other things. Google Docs does exactly the same thing. So building it, building your systems within a Google Doc was really helpful. What they did, which I thought was really cool, they being the people that I'm going to be doing my personal systems with, is they build the system being the workflow within a project management solution like Trello or Asana or I use ClickUp and they use the boards. And as you do the task, then you put the task in like these are the daily tasks that I do. So you put it in your daily task and then as you're doing the recording or you're writing the SOP or the manual around it, then you link through to that particular task document, which is your Evernote or your Google Doc. And then within the Google Doc, it links through to the other documents that you need within your Google Drive or what have you. Uh, and so I was really, when I saw that, I was like super excited and I was like, Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna have I was thinking it. to myself, you can be in the position where you go, man, this is going to be the longest standard operating procedure ever. <laughs> because thinking about that podcast process, but do be aware that you'll have systems within systems. And maybe this, is, exactly. maybe this is where you become systems and processes maybe, who knows. But, you know, <laughs> like I think to myself, okay, in the editing, you know, the podcast production includes editing. And then this is how you edit within Camtasia. This is, mm -hmm. and so, but that's a, that's a separate system of its own that you would then link into. So make it bare bonesy, but then you build yes. it out with your links within it, yeah? Exactly. So have exactly. your system that links to all the processes. Or other systems. So, yeah, so, you, you know, you've got one system, which is your task management system, let's say. Mm -hmm. And let's say that you're doing it and you're building it out like a Trello board where you've got these are the tasks that I do daily, these are the tasks that I do weekly, these are the tasks that I do monthly, and these are the ad hoc tasks that I do, but they're repeatable let's just say, then yes, so you've got one system, which is then how you manage your tasks. Then within the task, you've got the system, which is podcast edit, or podcast recording would be a whole system in itself. And that might link through to a whole other, uh, pro it would almost, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could write it out as a project thing, right? Because there are a whole bunch of steps that you do. And then at the end of it, it's done. And then you get to do it all over again. All over again. And I'm picturing the blood system of a body. What's the blood system called? Is that the cardio? <laughs> the circulatory system? <laughs> it's one of them. The but I'm, I'm picturing all of, you know, you, an artery. So that's like, you know, producing a podcast. That's the artery. But then you bleed off into how you edit, how you record, how you promote, how you do all the things there were the all the veins and the capillaries but it, everything ends up being pumped by the core business this is what's feeding this business this is what's keeping this business going are all of these branches off yeah correct 
A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then just silly things like I know for me, I've got my face images in various locations, some's on a Google Drive, some's on the supplier who did my my personal branding, some is with you, uh, which is a different link and and there's different ways to access them and there's different passwords. And in my mind, I was like, I've got to con conglomerate them. No, no, I've got to consolidate. consolidate. <laughs> <laughs> Pick the word, it's such a C. <laughs> At least I didn't sort of say something along the lines of colostomate or something along those <laughs> At least lines. it was an extra word, that's right. It was an extra word. Yeah. A wrong one, but a, a word always <laughs> Uh, so you can, I, I, want, I was thinking I need to consolidate that, but that's all a huge job. No, no. In my system, I can simply say if you're looking for a headshot, for a podcast or anything to do with Julie and Shannon, here's the link. If you're looking for a Shannon headshot, here are two links. Mm. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. But even going back to your question of if you're a solopreneur, people are probably listening going, how is that so disorganized? Well, it's because I've got, I've been running the business for eight years. I've had various people take photos of me and I've got them stored in lots of different locations. And what do we fill our days with? The things that are rising to the top in importance and urgency. And exactly. consolidating all the images very quickly goes to the bottom of the priority list. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So what a, what, a, what a much better way. And then once I've got them all sitting there, if I'm outsourcing to someone to use my face... <laughs> <laughs> in appropriate ways, of course, on appropriate, appropriate sites. Ways. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Then then actually I could outsource it to someone to to consolidate it. That's not something that is really worth any of my time and energy. And I'm not being arrogant about that. I love coaching. Coaching is how I make money. I should be doing more coaching. Not finding my images and pulling them together and resorting them and stuff like that. That would be a procrastination system or strategy. That's it. That's it. What else do we need to talk about in terms of a system, Julie, do you think? The other thing I noted, Dan, was growth. Many businesses, mm -hmm. no matter how, what stage of size they are, have the intention to grow. That's the goal is to grow in some way. And it certainly is a trap for many people that they find themselves in when they grow and that's when things start getting really stressful or the customer journey starts to become compromised. Bless you, my child. <laughs> I was muted. <laughs> you were, but I can't see you sneeze and then not say bless you. <laughs> so you had to mute it anyway. <laughs> and so you think to yourself, when we are doing it this easy way of just recording ourselves doing the job when we're doing it and it's not taking an enormous amount of time and you're just throwing, you can throw that video anywhere you like, you can upload it to somewhere, you can just have an unlisted series of videos on your YouTube site and mm -hmm. they're all there. How much calmer are you if you do need to delegate anything out? For a start, you're going to start getting support more quickly because you know you have the time to be able to tell them how to do it because it's not going to take any time because all you're going to do is send through a link. But then how much more faith are you going to have that they're going to be able to provide a successful result for you when they've heard it all from the horse's mouth as if you were sitting right beside them doing it? And exactly. So it's, it just it, it softens that and and gives you f and reduces the, a lot of the risk involved in growing because you know we we know it's not the main person doing the job anymore and I've got a, I've got a company in mind that their customer delivery has been so affected because they have gone through growth but it's kind of that mid range growth in a sense that not enough to get more people on site in the business full time or you know committed part time people but many VAs doing it and the VAs obviously have various number of projects and so the customer journey is absolutely being affected and mm. so yet yeah, that's the level that some that sometimes you need to be grow because you can afford some some support but not full not full fledged support uh, so i think it can help you make sure that you're getting those people on board articulating the systems and the value behind it, the goal, the what are, um, 
what the vision is for the business as well. You're articulating all of that. So you're getting all the big whys behind it. And so they don't necessarily have to be working under the same roof as you in order to really get why I'm doing this task, why it's been structured in the way that it has been structured so far. Yeah, exactly. There's there's sort of no grey when you're doing it that way. I like to rhyme when I have the time. <laughs> you're obviously good at it, so. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's a great example where you can actually outsource and then they are. There is no gray in terms of why are they doing this this way? They just are. There's a whole bunch of reasons for it. And and certainly if someone's going why are they doing it this way? It could be done better. Fantastic. That's when you start process improvement, but you've got to have a starting point. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So talking about starting points Perhaps it's worthwhile mentioning where should you start? Great idea. Or where could you start? Great idea. Let me get a video of it of this right now. So no, how, do you put a, how do you put a podcast together? Okay, go. <laughs> well, I mean, that is exactly That's what it is, isn't it? it? Right. So I think that where you start is there's two ways that I think, or three ways that I think where you can start. Certainly, systemology suggests that you start with your customer journey. Nice. So you actually look at the the point of your marketing through to the onboarding of your customer and you, you sort of almost start right at the top and you start to build your systems from there. That's what they recommend and I think that that's a good one because every business is doing marketing, every business is doing sales. If you didn't pick up the reference listeners, look back to episode number 41 because that will actually tell you about your customer journey, your sales processes and your sales journey, your sales funnel. And and so that's a great one to document, particularly because a, a lot of VAs I think are very much involved in the marketing side of things or it's something that we do outsource often. A lot of people outsource their social media, at least the posting of it and, and sometimes engagement. And the the sales side of things, the more that we can systematise that, the less likely we're going to lose leads. So it's an, that's a good place to start. The other place to start is where you have just come up with your Evernote and what I've come out with, which is you just start by anything that you do, you start recording. Anything that you do that is a repeatable task, you start recording and then you start to build it into that board of daily, weekly, monthly tasks because that way you get a sense of what are you doing as you're doing it and also are able to time how long it's taking you to do it. So in terms of making a resourcing decision of getting your time off, getting your the time that you're using, getting the time that you're using to do the things. Getting the time so, back that you use by doing the things. Thank you for having <laughs> me, English. <laughs> So the more that you can do that, the better. So that's a good that's a good starting point, especially if you are a solopreneur. The other point that is worthwhile looking at is where is your highest pain point? And this is particularly important if you're a business owner and you're kind of wondering what, how do I train people or what's the biggest issue in the business in terms of blocks for me? I had a conversation with a client this morning and one of her big blocks is around bookkeeping, but it's a bit more complicated. It's a complicated business with lots of moving parts and lots of systems for the bookkeeping that feeds in. And the business owner has sort of partly outsourced it, but not and keeps getting pulled back into it. And this business owner is very system thinking. They they love a system. But they kept keep getting pulled back into the into the bookkeeping, and they were going to uh, hire a new company to do the bookkeeping because they thought it was going to solve their problem. And I sort of said to them, "You are going to have exactly the same problem because you haven't got the system written. You're going to be training these guys. These guys could not perform. They could leave you." and you still won't have the system 
in order to effectively outsource it. So you're not going to be able to train them effectively because you haven't written the system. So one this with this particular client, we're actually just starting with this particular process that they're running to build a system around that so that they can then outsource that particular thing, which is a major pain point of the business owner to offload that so that we can then work on the broader business systems. So three ways to look at it. One, which is your customer journey. Two, which is your, your tasks and just recording your tasks day to day. Or three, the biggest pain points that you actually do need to outsource. Yeah, absolutely. And it does seem overwhelming when you think to yourself, gosh, all the things I get done every year, goodness me. And, you know, there's an enormous amount of stuff. However, you know, I do love that saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Just get a start on it and then just recognize that progress, the, just the progress of getting one done after another, after another, one a day, one a week. Uh, and you'll still feel that sense of progress and at least you're getting there. Exactly, mm. exactly. So, Julie, is there anything else that we need to cover off on on today's podcast? No. <laughs> <laughs> we keep going, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> no, I think it's good. You know, there, there are just so we have identified all the enormous benefits, and when you do, when you do start to think about it, you start to recognise all of these benefits of making sure we get things systematised and down on paper, in video, whatever way is going to work for you. And yet, it's the pain of going through the motions. That and the enormity of the job that's stopping us from doing it. But we can put things in place to make sure it's not so enormous today and that we do achieve progress going forward. So just jump in and start doing it. Absolutely. And no, and no, especially as you're a small business owner, it's only going to get worse. <laughs> not that I want to stack the pain on, <laughs> but if you don't invest time in doing it now, as your business grows, the job of doing it is going to get even bigger and you'll have less time to do it and there will be more cost associated with doing it in terms of potentially losing staff, longer time to onboard them, longer time to get people with a return on your investment with them, any staff member. So definitely have a think about how to make it work and your your <laughs> the, the time that you put in your diary that you ignored. <laughs> For an hour. <laughs> that's where that's where potentially outsourcing it having someone else supporting you can be really valuable because they're going to drive you to do, to do it and they they also systemology suggests you do the recording but someone else does the writing down and the building of the system once you do the recording the benefit then is that they're the champion and they're hassling you to do the next thing to fill in the next part of the system so that it's not some, it's not a project that gets left halfway through. Mm. And link it to your customer journey. That's how important it is. That if you want to be able to consistently deliver a fantastic experience for your customer, your patient, your whatever, this is one of the things that's going to make sure that happens. And so link it with yes. your grand goal for your business. And and lots of pe people have been told that if your business isn't saleable, then why are you doing it? I'm not really in that camp. I don't know whether Inspired Outcomes is going to be saleable, but if I make shed loads of cash in in the time, I will have assets that will feed my retirement. So it doesn't necessarily need to be. But that's a whole other conversation. But if your goal is to sell your business, your business is I don't even know what the metric is, so I'm going to totally make it up. <laughs> Ten times more valuable when you have a system. If you have no systems in your business, it's not saleable. It's not a saleable asset. So that's outside of all the other reasons, if you are looking to sell the business at some stage, you have to have systems in place. You just have to. Have to. Have to. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> There's no great. Have to. <laughs> Uh, Julie, I think, oh, the last thing I wanted to mention, and I did mention it right back at the start, another one of the people that I spoke to is in automation. We are in the age of AI, which I don't know what stands for, autumn, uh, artificial, artificial intelligence. intelligence. 
<laughs> quite artificial. <laughs> quite artificial. <laughs> but the thing is, all these manual processes will be taken over by computers. They just will. And the sooner that you can document them down, the repetitive tasks that don't involve, that are repeatable and doesn't involve genius, and I'm not trying to offend anyone here when I say this, I there are lots of tasks out there that have been replaced by robots and I'm I'm not going to get into the conversation of whether that's good or bad. It just is. It is happening. So the sooner you've got that, the sooner you can leverage the automation, which makes your life easier, makes your business more cost effective in the long term and does make it more saleable, again, if you're using the assets. So just saying. Plus, also, you don't have to manage an automation. So if you don't like people. <laughs> We're going back to the, the doormat. Get out. What, what is it? Get off. Get nick off. <laughs> but, but that's the thing, right? If you if you don't like managing people and half of your business can be automated. You beauty, what a pretty little life that is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thank you, Shannon, for bringing me back to my yearly goal, one of my yearly goals and making sure it's put back. Thank you, Universe, making sure it's being put back in the diary again tomorrow. My pleasure. You know I love you know I love being an agent of the universe. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Thanks for being open. <laughs> Thanks for being your channel. <laughs> Just flowing. Just flowing. <laughs> well, until next time. Until next time. I look forward to chatting with you then, Shannon. Have a fantastic week or fortnight. Fare thee well, Julie, fare thee well. Listeners, you take care and we'll see you next time. Beautiful. Bye-bye.